Good day everyone, Complaining Gamer here. Now in my recent 1.8.1 release date video, I said that I wasn't going to go into any of the nitty gritty details because I wanted to show respect for the patrons who pay and get that information in advance. But as is always the case with the internet, there was an information diary and everything leaked out anyway, so we may as well jump into the nitty gritty of 1.8.1. Some people love these videos, some people hate these videos, usually some patrons feel that their privilege has been infringed upon. At the end of the day, it is what it is. I personally I don't care if the information gets out there or not and I am a paying patron. I think when it comes down to it, it's just the nature of the beast and the nature of the internet. There's no real way to lock down any type of information. The information leaks, Simu itself gets cracked, life goes on. So with that said, are you ready? Let's jump in. As previously stated, Simu 1.8.1 comes out on Friday the 23rd of June for $5 plus patrons and a week later for the public. In terms of a timeline, what that means is that there's been a month between releases. Now according to the update notes, the changes are quite significant and the Simu devs are not simply sitting on the patron money that people accuse them of doing. One thing that I would like to make extremely clear is that the Simu team is often accused of only working on Breath of the Wild. Now in an emulator environment, this is just not realistic or even what they're doing. There are plenty of titles that they must work on. When it comes to trying to attain that goal of achieving perfect emulation, any changes that you make for one title can potentially have negative effects on another title, so there is constantly that balancing act going on. Does Zelda get a lot of attention? Sure, I don't think that can really be denied, but it is definitely not the only title being worked on. Starting out with Simul 1.8.1, we have a gallery of graphical improvements. What the images and GIFs show is a wonderful leap towards more accurate emulation. Now, when we talk about Breath of the world we can finally see that the long-awaited fog is making an appearance. Not only that, we also see accurate particle effects without glitches. The developers themselves have said that their ultimate goal is accurate emulation. One observation that I feel compelled to make from that classic Great Plateau cliffside vista is the cloud next to Death Mountain. It looks as though it's slightly misplaced. When we compare that to the Switch and Wii U versions, it looks as though the horizontal cloud should be a bit closer to the main cluster above the volcano. Either way, it's not a deal breaker, and if it is indeed misplaced, then I'm sure in a later iteration of Sumit it will definitely be fixed. In terms of the performance hit, I don't actually imagine that there'll be one because the Simu devs would not implement something that would take away from the overall experience. Of course, this is just my opinion and purely speculation, but I do expect that the performance of 1.8.1 will be on par with 1.8.0b or maybe a few frames better. Moving on, AMD users are going to be very happy to hear that the shadow bug that was going across the middle of the screen has been fixed. After that, we have general improved compatibility across a number of titles. And then something a bit interesting where we talk about socket API support. And of course, additionally, we have general bug fixes across the board, as well as more accurate use of the keyboard. If you ever needed an indication of the Simu team's ambition and dedication, here is a good one, the support for socket API. So basically what they've done is Simu can now support the most basic way for an application to access the internet. Now, what this does not allow is Netplay. This feature requires no setup, it just works straight from your connection. So Simu has a basic browser in its infancy with the ability to connect to certain apps such as YouTube. Web pages should work, but once again, Netplay will not. In case you didn't know or simply forgot, Simu does have a compatibility list that you can check to see the current state of a given game that you might be interested in. In. Additionally, there is now a new introduction of a more technical text-based version which the developers directly use to help them with certain issues. As always, anything relevant to what I'm saying will be linked in the description below. With Simu's ongoing mission of accurate emulation and to prove that they don't just work on a single game, they have added a new title to the list of games which boots which is Darksiders War Mastered Edition. On the topic of games that you love, whether it's Tokyo Mirage or Monster Hunter or Smash Brothers, you're just gonna have to be patient all good things come in time. Some games don't boot, some games do, some games have issues, some have more, some have less. You may not agree with the direction of the Simu team, but one thing that I think is important to remember is that they are also individuals with their own opinions and own ideas and even own games that they like, you know? Simu rarely get into the details of a specific game, so this is why things like the compatibility lists are important. Become part of the community, test the games, give your feedback, comment on Reddit, chat in the Discord. If you want to 
see something change for something that you love, then really push your point, get your voice out there and heard. One thing I will say is that you'll probably face some backlash, but this is just the nature of the beast. It's the internet and people just love the opportunity to be shitty. So yeah, that's pretty much it for now, people. See me 1.8.1 is looking good. It, remember, it comes out on Friday the 23rd of June for $5 plus patrons and seven days later for the public. Thank you very much. I've been The Complaining Gamer. If you enjoyed the content, remember to subscribe and I will catch you next time.